Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I wanted to show something to you before I ripped into it because I know a few of you are curious in these FPGA kits we see knocking around for eight quid, 10 quid, something like that. Whatever they are, pocket money, basically, for what you're getting. Um, so I thought I'd open one up just to show you how they arrive. They obviously came in just a regular boring jiffy bag. You don't need to see that. So you get two fangs. Uh, some kits, by the way, when you order them, only come with one part. So this is the full Monty. So you can have a look, see what you get. So first things first, you're getting the Altera. I don't think it's genuine Altera. USB blaster and lead. That's quite nice, and that's a USB micro. I do like programmers that use USB micro because USB minis, Sorry, this is the mini, sorry, USB mini, uh, because the leads go missing all the time and all the programmers tend to use the same leads, so I find that great, so no one's nicking those for their phone. Although I guess now we're going to USB-C, the micros are gonna start becoming <laughs> rarer. And let's have a little look inside there. It does have an Altera written on the board, but I'm sure it's not. It says pick 18F, 14k50 so that's the uh, pick chip that's capable of obviously driving usb it's a little bit fancy 18 series pick and then this other thing which is an lvc 244a which i don't know what that is but it's probably just a level shifter and a 12 megahertz clock so there's not really much in there apart from a couple of leds nothing on the back so when you plug this in and use it we should see a couple of leds light up and there you go look it actually is marked on the case power and act Activity. Very nice. Nice little bit of kit. I do like my programming dongles. I do like the arm ones too. So this is the Altera FPJ board and uh, I don't know if it's a genuine Cyclone 2 or not. I don't even know if they even make the Cyclone 2 anymore. But it says it's an EP2C5T144C8N. So it's a 2C5. So I don't know what the difference is between the 2C5 and the 2C8. It's going to probably be how many gates you have. Um, I don't know much about these, by the way. So uh, I know an FPJ stands for a Field Programmable Gate Array. And effectively, you can make them do what you want to do. So if you th see those things that have emulation cores running on them, they're running on this sort of thing. Um, I believe you can use it for CPU type things where you have a time base and you are uh, stepping through your logic based on an oscillation frequency, you know, pulse, 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 so like a computer chip, or you can just run them in purely kind of reactive logic mode. There's no timing signal, it's just they get inputs and they uh, react to it and they make outputs. So you can use that to replace your like seven series logic, for example, or a whole load of seven series logic if you want. Uh, just to cover uh, something while we're here though, you notice there's two programming ports and both of them uh, look identical and they are. One's used that way, one's used that way. Uh, I'll tell you what they are though. This one is the JTAG port and it says, clearly says JTAG. And uh, that's how when you're using this in the debugging environment, I think the software is called Quartus, correct me if I'm wrong. And you can uh, download your code through the debugging header on JTAG, run it, do your things, and, and that's fine. And you say, why do you have that? Well, I do believe there's a bit of flash somewhere, and it's probably that very, very resiny chip. We'll have a look at that. Um, which this mode, it will, I think it's a serial programming mode. It will allow you to program up that flash chip. And in fact, look, I'm going to hold, we're going to look on that because we can see it's that chip. You got some wires come in. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it's hooked up to that chip. Uh, he says unsure of himself. But uh, the idea is you program this chip, and that's basically the bootloader then for the FPGA. So instead of the code coming through the JTAG, it comes through the uh, that chip loaded in. So you got to remember this. If you're used to working with microcontrollers, you get everything in the microcontroller, don't you? you get the flash, you get the uh, programming memory, all the the peripherals, whatever you want. On this you don't get anything and you don't have that inside so you need to load your code into this. And the code is, is, is it does it does many things. It configures that, right? So it's not just saying here's your program you're going to run. It's saying 
this is the CPU I want you to emulate and this is the code you're going to run, right? So these are very important things. So imagine they are like your floppy drive in your PC or something like that. Um, but not only is it the <laughs> the bootloader for your PC, but it's like a, a file, a definition file, telling your PC that it is a PC. So nice and complicated for you. That's why really getting into FPGA is not recommended first step. If you want to get into sort of microcontroller, electronic -y type things, it's better, yeah, start with your PICs or your AVRs or your Arduinos, frankly. Start with your Arduinos and work your way up. Um, so this will be the next step, probably get one of these before you move on to the big FPGAs that do loads of complicated things. So there's your FPGA chip, and you can see all of the uh, I.O., most of it, I think, is pulled out. I didn't count the pins on it, um, and I'm probably not going to count the pins, but it looks like most of them are out. You have on the back a 50 megahertz clock, so I don't know how that divides down in FPGA terms, how fast that is, because it's probably working on a multiple on that. It will be, uh, you know, it could be 25 megs internal. I, I don't know how they work. And that's pretty much it. Some oh, obviously power regulation, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. You have these headers. <coughs> I don't know why they didn't solder them on for you, but I guess it's so that you have the choice of how you want to hook this up. Just trying to push that through. It doesn't really want to go. I might have a bent pin, so I'm not sure the headers are the best quality or the holes. Something's something's not right. Um, but I don't think you'd have too much trouble getting them in if you really want to. There you go, that one's in. Um, and you're going to attach to these to your bit of breadboard or your various things, and that's going to be your I.O. So obviously you've got some pins on there that are carrying grounds and powers. Um, great. And then the rest you're just using a standard logic. I don't know if you have pull-ups or pull-downs in this chip. I think this is a pretty entry-level chip. It's not going to have anything fancy, so all of your pull-ups and pull-downs you're probably going to have to do yourself. Um, be aware of the voltage. So if, for example, and I suspect this will be a 3v3 part because most things are, um, that you, you're not going to be able to interface it directly to, say, a serial port if you want to put a serial port driver on here. So you're going to need to still do some level level translation between those things. And then if you're also using it for current devices, you probably won't have a problem twiddling a transistor with the appropriate um, resistors on the, the base. Um, but just bear it in mind, I guess is what I would say. Just bear it in mind. And I'm pretty sure it's a 3v3. It's probably not a 1.8 volt part. But you never know, really, you just got to check it out. So I'm looking forward to doing some future projects with this to, to learn a little bit about um, VHDL or Verilog or however you code these darn things. Or maybe just plop a uh, core on it. You probably could just get a ZX Spectrum. Here's an example for, you know, just for shits and giggles. Just get... Um, Get a few pins on this twiddling so you get VGA output on that. So you've got a monitor driver, yeah? And then get a ZX Spectrum core on there, and uh, there you go. You've got your ZX Spectrum. That's all you need. Uh, use some of these I.O. pins to co connect to a matrix keyboard, and uh, you're all set. That's literally the sort of thing you can do with these. So uh, if you want to learn something new and you're slightly uh, interested in electronics, um, this could be the way for you to go about it, and it's very cheap. So even if you buy it and never use it, you can throw it in the drawer with all your other Raspberry Pis and Arduinos that you planned on doing so much with, um, but failed. As ever, thank you for watching.